Good afternoon, this is Dr. Thomas Klein in Raleigh, North Carolina. I am a chronic and rare disease specialist, uh, also representing our uh, group that is researching all these topics, JATH. People ask me what JATH came from, and it came from the first, uh, the first letter of the names of my two children and my wife and myself. Jane, Alex, Thomas, and Heidi. So, mystery revealed. The, um, somebody um, put a comment that we should talk about the topic of respiratory depression. Respiratory depression is mentioned 20 times in the CDC guidelines. As we know, these are the unauthorized CDC guidelines because CDC does not have rulemaking authority, only the FDA has authority. But one of the scare tactics that's being used by the narcophobics, that's a new word which we will discuss later, narcophobic, kind of like opiophobic, nar uh, narcotics is the best word for using in research. Narcotics is everything. So when you read the CDC guidelines and they're saying, well, it's prescription drugs plus methadone without methadone and semi-synthetics without the, uh, and it's so confusing that one can't really figure out what's going on at the CDC, except they appear to be narcophobic. One of the things that's pretty scary is that if you take pain medicine, you don't want to have respiratory depression and die. Uh, that's pretty awful. Uh, you know, that's enough to scare people off. I remember when I had some surgery at the Mass General in Boston, the anesthesiologist said, well, you know, you could die from this. And I said, whoa, uh, why are you telling me that? <laughs> people who come in for surgery always think they're gonna die. But here's a good question to start asking researchers, asking your own doctors, asking anybody who makes a flat statement. The flat statement is people die from overdoses uh, from their opiates. So the next question to ask is how many? What's the percentage? In analyzing the opiate problem that goes back more than 100 years, it kind of struck us that a lot of what everybody says is true it just doesn't have a number on it. People, uh, there's a lot of heroin addicts. That's called a flat statement. What you need to ask is how many heroin addicts are there in the United States? And the answer is one half of 1% or less than 1%, which has been the number all along. We've already talked about that. So let's move on to respiratory depression. So this is a paper that was uh, published um, in the United Kingdom at the Leiden University Medical Center. And basically it's a pretty long paper and detailed, but here's the, here's the conclusion. Opioid treatment of moderate to severe pain is generally safe with less than 1%, actually one half percent, or less of events related to respiratory depression. This uh, very thorough paper also uh, mentions that the risk is higher when you first start taking this. Uh, and that's one of the CDC things was to stay under 90 milligrams when you're starting. Maybe that's okay when you're starting. Nothing in the CDC regulations about 90 milligrams for chronic pain use I had a pharmacist turn down a prescription because it was over 90 milligrams. The um, other things that we found in reviewing quite a few more papers than we have here, we just selected a few. Um, this was written by a pharmacist, um, Scott Lothian, and he wrote this for Medscape. He said something that we didn't know, but I've checked into it and it is true. Along with a eventual tolerance in opiates, the side effect of respiratory depression also becomes tolerant, which means when you first start taking an opiate, you're gonna get drowsy. 
and uh, you may get an upset stomach. And at that time, you may have some ability to have respiratory depression, so you have to be careful not to add other things, but it wears off. So when you're using long-term opiates, your chances of having respiratory depression almost disappear. Uh, one of our members, uh, one of our JAF members, a physician for 25 years, said he has never seen an overdose from opiates and never seen an opioid, uh, opioid overdose with benzodiazepines in his 25-year career. We're also going to be polling doctors around the country to see if we can come up with some information. That's a lot more reliable than some of these studies that are written by people from Physicians for Opioid Prescribing. There are seven studies in the CDC guideline that purport that the overdose uh, the respiratory depression risk is higher the more you take. Not true. Now, did the people at the CDC doubt that? No, because they were working kind of closely together. So, who else has supported this notion of high doses in respiratory depression we looked for other agencies, papers, et cetera, et cetera, and what we found was none. The only people purporting this was the CDC Prop Coalition. Now, why do people have overdose? It usually occurs in people on the street. How often does it occur? in people who receive prescriptions. We're still working on the numbers, but it looks like between 500 and 1,500 people a year die from overdoses of opiates who receive them by prescription. That's the general population. A lot of people die on the streets with opiate disease, but actually it's very rare that people who take their medicines like they're supposed to um, die. A lot of people die from other things while they're taking their opiates, but that's not mentioned in these papers by the prop members. Autopsies were not done. They did not take into account potential suicides. It's one of these kind of flat statement studies. You know, these, these people die and that seems like a lot, but actually the number of people that die in these studies was real low like 0.3% of the people taking the opiates. And that's how we're coming up with this figure of 500 to 1500. It's, uh, we're still working on it, and we may eventually write a little paper and publish it on our uh, website. Now, there are things that potentiate the effects and can lead to overdoses but not benzodiazepines. The most dangerous combination is two things, alcohol and believe it or not, antidepressants. Okay, this has not been studied. It's a little bit embarrassing because the CDC and PROP recommend taking antidepressants for your pain because they don't want you taking opiates being narcophobics they want you to take something else. Antidepressants don't work for pain. They are not FDA approved. They're just being recommended by these people because they don't want to recommend the drug that really works. So if you are taking uh, opiate and you're concerned and you're taking a benzodiazepine, it's going to be fine. But if you are taking antidepressants or if you are taking um, uh, alcohol, be careful. Those are the things you need to be careful about. Next time we're going to discuss the limits that have been placed on the prescription of opiate pain medicine. Thank you.